Hello students. So in the previous sessions, we have completed the strain gauges and potentiometers in the part, part 2 of unit 1 in the S2 transducers. That means we have discussed about the principle of operation, construction, advantages, disadvantages and applications of both potentiometers and strain gauges. So in this session, we are going to discuss about the RTDs and thermistors. So generally these RTDs and thermistors are also resist to transducers. As already we know that resist to transducers are the transducers whose resistance changes due to changes in the physical parameter or physical quantity. So these RTDs and thermistors are also called as resist to transducers which are used for measurement of temperature. So before going into the actual basic principle of operation and construction of these devices, first we will see what is temperature and what are the other methods used for measurement of temperature. Then we will come back to the this RTD and thermistor. RTD can also be called as resistance thermometer devices or sometimes in some books it is given as resistance temperature detector also. Okay. Before that, what is temperature? Temperature is defined as degree of hotness or coldness of a body or degree of hotness or coldness of surroundings. So if you take this is a body, so how much amount of hotness or coldness this body is having? That is nothing but temperature. So each and every body is having some temperature that may be having some uh, maybe minus 2 degrees, minus 10 degrees or 100 degrees centigrade. Maybe it is having some either hotness or coldness, but it is having some amount of temperature. So that temperature can be defined as degree of hotness or coldness of a body. If it is having some cool, that is also having some temperature. Maybe sometimes that it may be 2 degrees or 3 degrees or maybe minus degrees centigrade. If it is hot also, it is having some temperature. In other way, uh, a scientist called Lehman has defined the temperature that Temperature is defined as a condition of a body by virtue of which heat is transferred from one body to another body or one body to neighboring body or one body to some surrounding. Say these are the two bodies which are having two, two different temperatures. For example, this is having some only almost room temperature that is 25 degrees centigrade. Just assume that these two are some iron bodies and this is having some 75 degrees centigrade. When the both are having contact like this, after some time, say this is 25 degrees and this is 75 degrees centigrade, after 5 or 10 minutes, so this body gets heated, which is cool, that gets heated because of this temperature of the artist of this body. So this heat is transferred from this body to this body. So the property or the condition of the body by virtue of which heat is transferred from one body to another body is called temperature. So like this we can define the temperature. It is degree of hotness or coldness of a body or it is defined as a condition of a body by virtue of which heat is transferred from one body to neighboring body. So generally the temperature can be measured in different methods. Those are non-electrical methods, electrical methods and radiation methods. Non-electrical methods, generally we are having some mercury thermometer, bimetal thermometers, there are some devices. So, regarding those, we will discuss in the second unit or you may have some other subject that is industrial instrumentation, we are going to discuss about the measurement of temperature using these non-electrical methods. Those devices are called as thermometers, liquid and glass thermometer, vapor filled thermometer, gas filled thermometers, bimetal thermometers. And again in the electrical methods, Again, there are two types. There is due to change in resistance or variation of resistance due to change in temperature or uh, generation of thermoelectric EMF. And third one is radiation methods. So every body which is having some temperature or every hot body is having the ability to uh, generate some EMF. Sorry, uh, to provide some radiation. It can emit some amount of radiation. So by observing the radiation, depending upon the intensity of radiation, we can measure the temperature. Those are called as 
radiation methods. So in this case, first we will go for the electrical method first part due to the variation of resistance with change in temperature. So now for this we are having the two devices those are called as RTD and thermistors. Resistant thermometers and thermistors. So these are the resistive transducers used for measurement of temperatures. So every material that may be conductor or semiconductor the temp uh, as the temperature of these materials changes the resistance also changes. As we know that R equal to rho L by A. The resistance of a conductor is expressed by an expression called R equal to rho L by A which already we have discussed. As the temperature of the body changes there is a chance of moving the charge carriers from one place to another place. So the changing of uh, moving the charge carriers is nothing but changing conductance. As the conductance changes resistivity also changes. Due to that resistance also changes. But the change in resistance due to change in temperature may be different for different types of materials. Generally for most of the conductors, for most of the conductors, as the temperature increases, resistance also increases. As the temperature increases, resistance also increases. For some materials called uh, most of the time metallic oxides or uh, some semiconductor materials, as the temperature increases, the resistance will drop, will decrease. So, in the first principle, the resistance of the conductors changes due to change, increases or changes due to change in temperature in proportional. That principle can be used for measurement of temperature and those devices are called as resistance thermometers. So, simply the resistance of a conductor changes when its temperature change. This property is utilized for measurement of temperature. Generally, this RTD is having the property which is nothing but positive temperature coefficient of resistance. So, what do you mean by positive temperature coefficient of resistance? As the temperature increases, if the resistance of the material also increases, then you say that that is the positive temperature coefficient of resistance. So, this property in conductors can be used for measurement of resistance sorry can be used for measurement of temperatures and those devices are called as resistance thermometers so this is the variation of resistance with temperature t can be represented by relationship for the most of the metals is given by r equal to r naught into 1 plus alpha 1 t plus alpha 2 t square plus so on alpha n t power n where R0 is the resistance at capital T equal to 0. What is capital T? That is the absolute temperature, which is given as small t, degree centigrade, plus 273. So when this absolute temperature equal to 0, what is the amount of resistance of the particular metal or particular conductor he is given by R0, which is always constant. And where alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3 up to alpha n, these are some constants, these are depending upon the type of materials used for construction of RTDs. So, the variation of resistance with temperature T can be represented by the equation R equal to R naught into 1 plus alpha 1 T plus alpha 2 T square up to alpha n T power n. Generally, this is the very quadratic expression, big expression. Generally, for linear approximation, this can be reduced to only this term, alpha 1 term. That is R equal to R naught into 1 plus alpha 1 T. So, if you observe that equation, R naught is also constant. That is the resistance of that metal at T equal to 0. Alpha is also constant that is depending upon the materials used for construction of this one. So, finally, the resistance of this metal conductor which is changing is depending upon the T that is the change in temperature. As the temperature changes the resistance can be changed. So that can be there. So this R is proportional to the T. Okay. So there are various materials can be used for construction of resistance thermometers. So generally those are nickel, copper, platinum. Other materials can also be used. We will we'll see. So as the temperature increases, so how the resistance of these materials can be changed is given by this characteristics. It is plotted in this characteristics. 
okay metals commonly used for rtds are platinum copper nickel tungsten so just now we discussed that that is depending upon the alpha that is a constant you can say that it is a positive temperature coefficient of resistance so that is given for each metal is 0.39 percent that means if there is a change in one degree centigrade in temperature surrounding of this particular material if it is a platinum if there is a change in rest change in temperature is one degree centigrade the change in resistance is 0.39 percent or you can say that 0 0.0039 times of the actual resistance so for platinum it is having 0.39 percent copper 0.39 nickel 0.62 tungsten 0.45 so these are the temperature ranges which can be used for by these materials and the melting points of these materials for the platinum 1773 degree centigrade copper 1080 and so on okay so these are the normal materials we will see what are the properties of these materials and which can be used most widely for construction of arteries now okay the resistance the number uses is the change in electrical resistance of the conductor to determine the temperature as we have discussed earlier. So as the temperature changes, the resistance also changed. So this property can be utilized to determine the temperature by using resistance thermometers. So what are the materials can be used for construction of these RTDs? So normally we cannot go for uh, just like that all the materials you cannot go for stainless steel you cannot go for um, uh, just like copper or just like you cannot go for any other materials there should be some requirements it should satisfy the following requirements that can be used for construction of RTDs so what are those requirements the requirements of a conducting materials which is to be used for the construction of thermometers or the first condition first requirement is change in resistance of the material per unit temp change in temperature should be as large as possible for example if i am having the uh, two materials or two current materials a and b for a for change in temperature of one degree centigrade the change in resistance is only in terms of milli ohms some 0 0.1 0 0.2 milli ohms for case of B material as the temperature changing for uh, 1 degree centigrade the resistance may be changing some 100 ohms then the 100 ohms can be measured very easily or maybe 10 ohms that can be very easily detected compared to milli ohms change so that's why the change in resistance of material per unit change in temperature should be as large as possible next the resistance of the material should have a continuous and stable relationship with the temperature for any cases as the temperature changes that is having some stable relationship at this particular time whatever the amount of the, uh, relationship and that should be same for next day also that should not change it should have the continuous as well as stable relationship with change in temperature so these are the two requirements of the material which should be used for construction of RTDs. first one is the change in resistance of the material per unit change in temperature should be as large as possible and the resistance of these materials which can be used for construction of water ready should have continuous and stable relationship with the temperature so there are so many materials can be used but what are the advantages and disadvantages of those materials and what is the most widely used material we will see we can also use gold and silver for construction of water ready but they are having very low resistivity so r equal to rho l by a if it is having very low resistance low resistivity ultimately the change in resistance per change in degree temperature degree centigrade temperature is also very low so that what happens because of its low resistivity if you want to use this gold and silver we have to use the large quantities so that may not be possible the cost of the material used for construction water will be more that's why gold and silver are rarely used for construction of rtd on account of their low resistivity and there is other material called tungsten it has relatively high sensitivity but these tungstens can be used for measurement of high temperature applications in most of the industries 
okay next copper is also used occasionally as an rtd element but again it is having some low resistivity because of its low resistivity it forces the element to be longer than the platinum element and but sometimes this copper is very low cost compared to platinum so sometimes as an economical alternative copper can be used but the upper limit of temperature is about only 120 degrees centigrade so platinum nickel and copper are the most commonly used materials or metals to measure the temperature or you can say that that are the materials can be used for construction of arteries generally the platinum is having its low sensitivity and high cost compared to platinum sorry compared to nickel and copper but it is the most widely used material for construction of rtd why because there are having some uh, reasons because of these following reasons platinum is used as most commonly used material for construction of resistance thermometer in spite of its low sensitivity and high cost what are those reasons the first one is the temperature resistance characteristics of pure platinum are well defined and stable over wide range of temperature so as we have discussed in the requirements the second requirement the resistance of the material should have a continuous and stable relationship so that is the first one over a wide range of temperatures the temperature resistance characteristics of pure platinum are very well defined and stable and this platinum material is having high resistance to chemical shock and contamination ensuring long term stability in most of the industries for measurement of temperature of water uh, generally if you are using that uh, material in a normal weather uh, after some time what happens there is chance of uh, getting some corrosion which okay so due to that uh, some contamination due to that what happens uh, the material can be destroyed within small days within few days so but this platinum metal is having high resistance to the chemical shock and corrosion or contamination so that it ensures long term stability so we can use that particular rtd for long term for a period of 3 years or 4 years and it forms the most easily reproducible type of temperature transducer with a high degree of accuracy so that's why because of these three reasons platinum can be used as the most sorry most widely used for the construction of rtds so this is the construction of rtd so these are the connecting leads these are called as platinum material this is actual element and this is connecting wires the connecting leads and this is some supporting metal sheet some okay, insulating material mounting thread and connecting leads and internal structure so these are the resistance wire that is nothing but platinum wire and this is a sheet and insulation this is called mica insulation and finally stainless steel production so this is the actual again in depth construction details so this wires these are these are rtd sensing element this is the platinum material so when we are immersing on in the boiled water and assume that this may be platinum so this is nothing but as it is immersed in the boiled water the resistance of this particular platinum material is changing so that can be sensed by using this leads and from that we are having some connecting leads and this is nothing but rtd and this is the photo of the rtd so generally the outlook of the rtd will be like this so this can be immersed in the boiled water or boiled liquid whose temperature to be measured so you can observe this in our laboratory okay generally so the connecting leads of this one is connected as one arm of the wheatstone bridge so generally this is a circuit used for measurement of temperature using rtd as i think it is not required to discuss about wheatstone bridge again as we know that wheatstone bridge is having four arms and here one arm can be used as rtd 
initially assume that the resistance of this RTD and another three resistance are equal so that the bridge is balanced. When you are immersing this RTD in a boiled liquid whose temperature is to be measured, the resistance of this RTD is increased as the temperature changes, as the temperature increases. Then what happens? The resistance of this will change so that the bridge becomes unbalanced. So there is a chance of getting the output voltage. So this output voltage depending upon the change in resistance, which is depending upon the change in temperature. So like that we can measure the temperature. Okay. So this is about the RTD. The materials used for construction of RTDs are platinum that is the most widely used and the other materials are maybe copper, nickel. Sometimes you can go for tungsten, gold and silver also. So this is about RTD. I will discuss the problems of the, on this RTD in the next session. So once again, this RTD is a resistive transducer which can be used for measurement of temperature. So the basic principle of RTD is the resistance of a conductor changes on account of change in temperature. So this change in resistance due to change in temperature is uh, proportional. That is, as the temperature increases, resistance also increases. As the temperature decreases, resistance also decreases. And this property is nothing but positive temperature coefficient of resistance. So this variation of resistance or with change in temperature can be used for measurement of temperature. So this is the formula and we have discussed already. So the, the main thing is what are the materials used for construction of RTDs and what are the requirements of those materials. Those material requirements are change in resistance per unit change in temperature should be very large and the resistance of the material should have continuous and stable relationship with the temperature. So out of all the materials, platinum is the most widely used because the resistance temperature characteristics of the pure platinum are well defined and stable over a wide range of temperature. It has high resistance to the chemical shock, contamination or corrosion or erosion which ensures long term stability and third one it forms the most easily reproducible type of temperature transducer with high degree of accuracy. So these are the construction of RTD. So that is enough. So I am going to discuss about the, I will discuss about the problems on this RTD in another session. So then we will go for the, the another topic that is called a thermistors. Thermistor is nothing but it is contraction of term thermal resistors. So in the thermal, the first five letters T H E R M in the resistors, the last five letters I S S T O R S. The combination is nothing but thermistors, which is nothing but thermally sensitive resistor. It is a thermally sensitive resistor composed of semiconductor materials. Example, ceramic. As already discussed that, for most of the semiconductor materials are metallic oxides. As the temperature increases, resistance decreases. So this property is nothing but negative temperature coefficient of resistance that means as the temperature increases resistance will decrease as the temperature decreases resistance will increase so this property is nothing but negative temperature coefficient of resistance most of the thermistors are having this negative temperature coefficient of resistance observe very clearly here i am saying that most of the thermistors are having negative temperature coefficient of resistance. I am not saying all thermistors. That means if I am saying most of thermistors, there are some thermistors which are also having positive temperature coefficient of resistance. But among that most are negative temperature coefficient of resistance. So these are the semiconductor materials which behave as the resistors with high negative temperature coefficient of resistance. Those are called as thermistors. So in some cases, the resistance of thermistors at room temperature may decrease as much as 5% for each 1 degree centigrade rise in temperature. That means for only 1 degree small change in temperature, the resistance is almost 5% change. Whereas in the case of platinum, we observed that is 0.39% only. Just now we have discussed the table, table column. But here, 
फाइव पर्सेंट चेंज इन रेजिस्टेंस फॉर ईच वन डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड रेज इन टेम्परेचर दैट मीन्स दिस धर्मिस्टर्स आर वेरी वेरी सेंसिटिव धर्मिस्टर्स आर हैविंग हई सेंसिटिविटी कंपेर्ड टू आर्टेडिस एज वेल एज धर्मो कपूल्स आलो सो दिस हई सेंसिटिव टेम्परेचर चेंजेस मेक द धर्मिस्टर एक्सट्रीमली यूजफुल फॉर प्रिशियन टेम्परेज मेजरमेंट्स कंट्रोलिंग ऑफ टेम्परेज टेम्परेचर एज वेल एज कंपनसेशन दैट्स वाई बिकॉज ऑफ इट्स हई सेंसिटिविटी वी कैन आलो इट कैन आलसो बी यूज फॉर मेजरमेंट ऑफ वेरी स्मॉल चेंज इन टेम्परेचर फॉर स्मॉल चेंज इन दैट इज पॉइंट वन पॉइंट जीरो वन डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड कैन आलसो मेजर्ड बै यूजिंग दिस धर्मिस्टर्स सो मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेस इन मोस्ट अप्लीकेशन धर्मिस्टर्स आर यूज इन द टेम्परेचर रेंज ऑफ माइनस सिक्सटी डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड टू फिफ्टीन डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड and the resistance of thermistors for example the thermistor the resistance of thermistor ranges from 0.5 ohms to 0.75 mega ohms construction of thermistors these thermistors are composed of mixture of metallic oxides such as manganese nickel cobalt copper iron and uranium so manganese oxide nickel oxide these are nothing but they are the materials used for construction of thermistors they are available in variety of sizes and shapes thermistors may be in the form of beads some type of rods probes and discs so this is this type of beads which are having some two leads so this may be made up of manganese nickel cobalt so as the temperature changes the resistance of this metal changes that can be measured using these leads connected leads so these are the different shapes of the thermistors so thermistors are well known for their small size and low cost compared to other materials other devices these are very small in size and low cost so when compared to thermocouples thermistors have few advantages all right on first one is they are more sensitive than other temperature sensi- sensors so all right on that for 1 degree centigrade rise in temperature It is having almost five percent change in resistance, so it is having ice sensitive, more sensitivity. So this ice sensitivity allows them to work well over a small temperature range. In terms of negative also, almost minus fifteen, minus forty, minus thirty degrees Celsius can be measured. That's why most of the thermistors are used in air conditioner as well as uh, our automatic uh, what you call as uh, refrigerators. And compared to other devices, it is having low cost. and can be easily adaptable for available resistance bridge circuits they provide fast response so that it can be used very easily and it can having the ability to withstand electrical as well as mechanical stress and it is having good operating range which lies between minus 100 degree centigrade to 300 degree centigrade so you can have the doubt here i have told that it can be used for minus 60 to 15 degree centigrade here i am saying that minus 100 to 300 But it is having the good operating range between this minus hundred to three hundred. But most widely, it can be used for applications minus sixty to fifteen degrees centigrade. So it can be easily interfaced to electronic instrumentation circuits. And the resistance temperature characteristics of thermistors is given by some R T one equal to R T two into exponential of theta into one by T one minus one by T two. Where if you observe this one. the resistance of this material at temperature t1 is inversely proportional to the temperature that is negative temperature coefficient of resistance where r t1 is nothing but resistance of thermistor at observed temperature t1 degree kelvin or t2 is the resistance of thermistor at observed temperature t2 degree kelvin and beta is the constant which is having a high value because of its high sensitivity that is depending upon the material used that is almost having 3500 to Four thousand five hundred kilowatts. So the problems again we will discuss in the next session for thermistor also. So these are the characteristics of thermistor. As the temperature increases from minus hundred to almost three hundred to four hundred, the resistivity is go on decreasing. It is having non-linear characteristics. Whereas if you observe the, if you compare the resistance temperature compare characteristics of thermistors as well as RTD. If you observe here, you could observe for minus hundred degree centigrade to 
almost 200 degrees centigrade. What is the amount of change in resistivity? Almost 1 mega to minus 10. Sorry, 10. That means again almost 10 power 5 or 10 power 6 between these temperature range. Whereas for platinum resistant thermometer, RTD, so between these two is maybe having some 100, almost 100 to maybe again less than 1000 only. It is a very very fraction of 10. Whereas it is a fraction of 10 power 5. So that's why it is you can say that it is having the high sensitivity. So this is about the thermistors and RTDs which can be used for measurement of temperature. So we have to discuss some problems on this RTD and thermistor. So we will try to discuss those problems in the next session. In another session we will discuss.